Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hey everybody, welcome once again to the Londonderry Bowling Center. It's time once again for Candlepin Skins, and happy that you've joined us here on the Winds of New England. Doug Brown, Dan Murphy, and uh, we continue along uh, with this series of bowlers, and we've had some close finishes. Two weeks ago, uh, an overtime finish for second place. Last week, it went right down to the final ball for first place. Yes, uh, our one and two bowlers kind of ran away with it last week. Uh, Brian Upholz on a roll, and, uh, you know, uh, what can you say? If he bowls as well as he did, he'll be with us for several weeks to come, too. Well, Brian will be back for his second week in a row, and back for his third week in a row today will be Keith Digio, who's been bowling, bowling very, very well. Very quietly, but he mm -hmm. gets the scores, you know, and uh, he beat Brian by a pin last week, and he'll be back again, like you say, for his third week in a row. Brian and Keith will be joined by Chris Bovair and Paul Willits, and here are the rules they'll be bowling with today on Candlepin Skins. Remember, our four bowlers compete individually, one box at a time. Each box is a separate competition in and of itself with a dollar value assigned. The high score in each box wins the dollar value or the skin assigned to that box. If there's a carryover, or rather if there's a tie for the high score, the dollar value carries over to the next box. The top two finishers in total pinfall will come back next week with an opportunity to earn even more prize money. The first three boxes in each game are worth $10 each. The next three boxes are worth $15 each. Boxes 7, 8, and 9 are worth $25 each. And the 10th box, worth $50. We bowl two games here on Candlepin Skins. Settle in, enjoy some Candlepin action. We'll be right back to get the match started after these words. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Paul Willits and Chris Bovair are on the lines and ready to go. Chris, you might remember from his appearance on the New Hampshire State Candlepin Championship here last year. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> An eight box for Paul. That's right. He that was your uh, semifinal, wasn't That's it, against right. Chris? And as I recall, it was pretty close, right? Or was it? I don't. I don't uh, know. I'd have to go back no, and look the that end, up. Now. In the end, it wasn't, but it was yeah. close after two games. Yeah. But I always said he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. You know, he's yes. A little bit of seasoning, and he's been very close in some of the singles shows, mm -hmm. or Sunday shows. I noticed in the roll-offs, and finally made the skins and. Once you make one, you get a lot of confidence, and you'll see him quite often. Oh, big recovery ball there for Brian Uphold. After losing the first ball to the left, he comes back with a spare, and Brian will take the skin as Keith misses the single. So that first $10 skin of the day goes to Brian Uphold, and here is the spare. Just took out the 4-7, but... Strike ball right there. That's right. Left himself a easy spare lead with those eight pins together. Here's Chris Bovair. off target to the right. And Chris gets robbed with the cap of the wood. And another 10. Pair of tens up now for the. Here's that spare attempt. Just deflected the ball away from the six pin. Keith Digio. On the spare, Brian Uphold carries eight. And Keith picks up his spare. Let's see if uh, Brian can match it. No. So give that skin to Keith Digio with the spare in the second. And Ryan has to settle for a 10 box.
Paul Willett's on the head pin this time, and he'll have a spare lead. Just a 4 7, a couple pieces of wood out in front. Chris Bovier gets a nice mix on a thin hit. Opposite side, he's got the 4 7, but no wood out in front. Paul takes his spare, his first. And Keith, uh, rather, Chris takes his, his first. So it'll take a strike to win this $10 skin. Ryan will try first. Off target to the left. Keith Digio, off target to the right. So a carry over. Everything but the head pin now for Brian. Keith, four spare. Not going to happen. Ten box for Brian, 38 through three. And for Keith, eight. He will be at 33 through three. So Paul and Chris, chance to make up ground here, working on marks. The fourth box worth $25 with the carryover. And a nine fill. Just barely caught the head pin. Good mixing action. Leaves himself just a 10. And as Doug said, a big nine fill on the spare. Eight on Paul's spare. Chance for two more here. Chris with the single. Oh, and he found the opening. gets his two in a row Paul Willits and there was the shot that Chris wanted candle pin skins brought to you in part by the car phone store of Nashua stop in say hello Vince Coletti the man in charge right on DW Highway South in Lamplighter Square across from the Pheasant Lane Mall Keith Digio wins the skin with the strike. That's the car phone store of Nashua. Right on DW Highway. Ten box for Brian Uphold. And here is the strike ball of Keith Digio. Brooklyn side hit and the collapse of the five pin. Fifth box worth $15. Paul Willits working on a mark. Oh, oh, oh he got it. Oh, how about that? That looked like it was going to be an ugly leave, and it turned into a strike. Three marks in a row for Paul Willits. Chance for Chris Bovair with the wood here. Oh, he missed the object. And it's a 10. So the strike by Paul Willits gives him the lead in the skin. And watch this one. Right there, it looks awful. <laughs> and then it got better. And then it got the best. <laughs> Target to the right for Brian. Leaves the four horsemen plus the nine. Keith went a little full on the head pin. He's working on a strike. So he's got a choice here. He's going to try to play that wood to the right. I don't think he's got the angle either, but I think that's his only play. Ooh, he tried it. Trying to play it right off the cap. Brian will take nine. So will Keith. And that brings us to our first break. Three scores in the 50s, and Paul Willits working on a strike with the lead overall here on Candlepin Skins. We'll be back. Chris Bovair. Seven pins se separating top to bottom. But Paul's going to increase that because he's working on a strike. 
Chris first. That's the lead Brian Uphold just had a moment ago. Two, four, and six left for Paul. Good bid there by Chris Bovier. Nine and nine. 83 through six for Paul Willits to increase his lead. And only a pair of nines up for the skin. Keith Digio. Boy, he couldn't even hear that ball hit the lane when he put it down. Boy, Brian has had some funny leaves here. We talk a little bit about Chris Bowyer. There's another young bowler right here. And Keith, and it's a spare up. Making a little name for himself, too. The last several weeks bowling extremely well. And you know, actually, Glad you brought that up, Dad, because you watch the two of them, and, and they have kind of similar body types, similar styles. They're both very smooth. Keith has that little uh, quirk where he kind of walks from right to left and then brings the ball back in from the Brooklyn side, but they do uh, look quite similar up there. The spare for Keith Digio wins the skin in the sixth, worth $15. And inadvertently gave it to Brian. We'll switch that. Brian got the nine box, and Keith got the spare. Paul Willits for the spare, yes. Four marks and five boxes for Paul Willits now. And a spare also for Chris Bovair. Nice shot using the wood on the nine and the ten. Only Chris is without a skin to this point. That will change, I have a feeling. I think so. If not, well, it won't happen this box, but sometime before too long, probably. Keith Digio on a spare. Great pocket hit, waiting for the action to come, and it never really does. Chance? No on the 10 pin. Eight for Brian and a nine for Keith. So the spares create the carryover. And we go to the eighth, which will now be worth $50. Chris Bovair with a six on his spare. Now Paul with his fill, and he will also take six. Not very good leaves here. I was gonna say, neither one would I long want to shoot at. Let's see if Paul can get this wood moving in front of the six and 10. Oh boy, he got the two tough ones, and wait a minute, wood coming back? Not gonna happen. Clean it up for a 10. 109 through eight, still leading. Ten leads for the skin right now as Keith and Brian step up. And a half worcester for Keith Digio. Brian Uphold, not much better. Brian opened the spear in the first box, and he's been shut out ever since. Remember, 10 leads for the skin here. 10 could win it. Oh, Whoa, wow. how about that shot? Oh. Seven for Keith. Tough 10 box for Brian. To have the skin, Ooh, and he gets it. gets it. Creating yet another carryover. And the ninth box is now worth 75. Brian Uphold almost making that shot for a spare. $75 here in the ninth. Oh, Paul Willits wanted that seven to go, and it did. For 
the spare. Nope. Ten bucks for Paul Willits. He is still the leader, Paul Willits is, but not by much. The ball coming back to give Chris a nine box. So Brian Uphold and Keith Dicchio step up. It's been a while since we've had a mark here. And Brian <laughs> fooled us all. He balked. <laughs> I think he got distracted by the uh, pin reset on lane 29. Decided to collect himself and fires one right through the middle. And four horsemen for Keith. Keith can convert this. He'll win the skin. No, and now somebody needs the 10 to have the skin or else Paul Willits will get it. Eight for Brian. Oh, right on that single in the corner for Keith. And we have yet another carryover. This 10th box now worth $125. Getting a little interesting here. As the money piles up, Chris Bovert. Oh, great pocket hit. Strike in the 10th. Good time to throw your first strike of the day with $125 on the line. Paul's got this 610, but that wood is way out in front. It's enough to convert it. Spare in the 10th, gives him 129. Well, this will heighten the drama a little bit as these guys have to uh, fill marks before Brian and Keith come up to take a shot at that strike. Here's Chris on the fill. Another one! Double strike! Now remember, that second strike does not count in terms of the skin. Only the first strike counts as far as the skin is concerned. The other strike is just the fill. Here is that second strike. Oof. Just as impressive as the first one. Paul Willits is going to have to have a piece of wood checked down on... He's finished this oh, that's game right. anyway. He's so. finished. That was the fill. That's right. So it's a 138 for Paul Willits and 127 for Chris Bovair. Well, now we are going to have to have that piece of wood move because it's still out front. I just sensed that that was going to be a problem <laughs> somehow. So the strike for Chris Bovair leads for the skin here in the 10th, a skin worth $125. Chris is not on the skins tote board yet. This be a good way to start. I have a funny feeling one of these bowls is going to throw a strike, though, and carry it over into the second game. Well, let's see. Ooh, Pretty that close. Was, that was a good enough ball, too, but leaves himself the 5-9. How about Brian Uphold? It, oh! No. Oh! Just that close. And Chris was holding his breath. <laughs> $125 skin for Chris Bover. The spare for Keith Diggio. The spare for Brian Uphold. So marks all the way across in the 10th, including that double strike. And Keith will throw strike on spare. Scores are very close. And a nine drop for Brian Uphold. So he'll finish with a 111. He's in fourth place. 138 leads the way. Paul Willits with Chris Bover just 11 pins behind. We're back for game two on Candlepin Skins in Londonderry after these words. The winnings from today's first game, Chris Bover. $125, and he got it all with that strike in the 10th. Keith Diggio also on the board. 
four skins. His worth $50. Paul and Brian have checked in as well. Now we move to game two. And Paul Willits starts it. Paul Willits, our overall pinfall leader at this point. After a 138 opening game. A little bit behind himself there. Left the ball to the right. And the 10. Tune in tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We begin our final regular season series of the year. On the way to finding our final qualifier for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. That's tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Chris, everything but the six pin. And some wood out in front. Should be no problem for him. There it is. Maybe finding the range a little bit. Double strike to finish the first game and no spare here. Ryan uphold with a nine drop. I sense a spare. He has to make up his mind on this wood. Play it or not to play it. Got it. Did have room to get by, but yes. not much. He, he hesitated about as long as I did. I would have. <laughs> he would play it. Shooting at something that's a, over a foot long, I'd take my chances with that. Keith missing the head pin, leaves himself the one, two, four, six, and ten. The two spares create the carryover. Box number two will be worth $20. Miss for Keith. Six bucks. Keith, the highest seeded bowler uh, remaining in this series now, so that's why he's in the cleanup spot. Bowling fourth. Which can be an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. Especially in this format. Where you have to worry about pinfall and each individual box. Yeah, I think there's a distinct advantage of being last in this format. Eight for Paul Willits. Chris Bovair now to fill his spare. Chris works as a mechanic at Lita Lanes in Nashua. He's from Merrimack. One of the great young candlepin bowlers in the game. Not enough to take the 10 pin. It'll be a seven fill. Don't bet against him making this. Pay, this time. pay up. <laughs> Do you hear me bet? <laughs> <laughs> A difficult shot. A four, seven, ten. But he gets out of it with a ten and takes the lead for the skin with that ten box. Brian now low man on the totem pole, as you can see down the bottom. Running total, but he's working on a spare. Chance to help his cause. Wow, look better than that. Seven fill, but not the greatest leave. And three, five, and ten. Certainly makeable, though. Ooh. Nine. Chris Bovair's ten is still good. Keith Deggio will take a shot at it now. himself a spare leave. That'd make him the prohibitive favorite for this skin right now, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of wood in front of the 4-7. For the spare and the skin,
Will, it's great ball for a strike. That ball is just broken sharp, dead into the one three pocket. Watch it coming down the lane, turning and just picture perfect in the one three strike. Well, that only can be halved. And there it is. That didn't take long. <laughs> Throw one ball, sit down. It's a pretty simple and, format. And Chris had that little <laughs> gleam in his eye. He looked back at Paul, say, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still around. <laughs> and they're running one and two right now in total pinfall. Yes, Paul and Chris. That's right, just two pins apart. So we have a guaranteed carryover here in the third with the two strikes already on the board. Ten box there for Brian. Keith Digio working on a spare. A little off target, but not too bad. Not bad at all. He's got the one in the seven, but he has a nice angle on the wood behind the head pin, which is going to direct that head pin toward the seven. Ooh, oh, went too by. far right. Big sigh after he threw that ball, knowing he had a good opportunity to put two in a row. But instead, it's a nine box. So first Paul Willits and then Chris Bovair will be working on strikes here. We have a $25 carryover skin now here in the fourth. Paul lives in Framingham, Massachusetts, but works for the town of Holliston as a school teacher. Seven is the fill. And seven is also the box. 42 after four. say Chris has found the range. He's just been on that head pin the last several boxes carrying over from the first game. This time he's going to shoot at the triangle on the right hand corner the six nine and ten. A couple pieces of wood just to go spear on strike. And he's got it. Had to be patient with the ten pin. I thought it'd go a little quicker than that, but he got the job done. It's three marks out of the first four boxes and the overall lead now. Oh, Brian uphold. Just dead on the head pin there. Punching out the one, five, and nine. And now he needs an escape ball. Seven. Chris Bovair's spare leads for the skin. Keith Digio to try and match it or better it. Well, he'll have to make a shot. Give the skin to Chris Bobear, $25. Chris up to $150 now on the day. And a very nice 10 box for Keith Digio. What a shot. Too bad it's only for a 10, but it was a heck of a shot. One, seven, nine, 10. It was a nine and a 10, and finally the seven. The fifth box, worth $15, and Paul Willits, a very, very thin hit. 
Well, the three, five, six, seven, and ten. That'll be a chance for Chris Bogart to build on his lead here. He's working on a spare as he steps up. on the 10 pin a seven fill for Chris second time he's had that leave ten box Worcester. Brian's got to start making something happen. It's at 154. Both Brian and Keith. Well, 10 box leads for the skin. Just a six for Brian. Keith with a chance to take one here. Great pocket hit. Oh, he deserved that nine drop. Hey, how about a strike? No. Wood didn't turn quite enough. Two shots at it. First one to win the skin outright. Oh, yeah. That's what he'll do. And that takes us to the break. A $15 skin for Keith DiGio in the fifth. Chris Bovair in the overall lead at 201 with five boxes to go here on Candlepin Skins. Paul Willett's ready to go. Sixth box of game two here on Candle Pinskins. The top two pinfall finishers today will come back next week and they'll be joined by Bill Hart and Pat Pay. It's a nine box for Paul. Two tough competitors next week. Uh, Pat has been here many, many times, of course, over the years. And Bill Hart, probably best remembered for his doubles run with Mark Arnold a few years back. That's right. Chris Boger with the four horsemen plus the ten, but also a piece of wood. Nope. No. Chris taking them one at a time in just seven. Three and the five. No, one, three, and nine. Either way, not very good. I was going to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> it makes much difference. It's a difficult spare leave. And Brian will try for the ten, probably just a nine, and that's what it is. So, pair of nines. Hmm. And perhaps more importantly, Keith Digio working on a spare here with a chance to gain ground on everybody else. 
including the two leaders. That's right. If you were to throw a big fill and another mark here, you'd be right with them. Or, or very close, anyways. Oh, no. Just three. Well, hey, you know, those nines may create a carryover. <laughs> <laughs> Nine or more is going to be a struggle here, certainly. It's looking real good. It's a nine carryover indeed. And we move to the seventh, which is now worth $40. I think over the months that we've been doing this show, Dan, sometimes what happens when you're in that cleanup spot, that last spot, and you know, for instance, in that particular case, that you only need a 10 to win the skin, you maybe try and go for a little extra <laughs> on the first ball, or, or maybe the opposite, be too careful. You might be right. Spare for Paul Willits. In the seventh. I think we've talked about it before. There can be more pressure to throw a 10 box when you need one than, than a spare or a strike if you need one. Chris Bovair. Diamond with a helper. Well, maybe not. Nope. No. For the 10. Brian Uphold in a five box drought here without a mark. And every time he's on the head pin, something like that happens. Two, four, seven on the on the left, and three, six on the right. It'll be an eight. The spare for Paul leads for this skin, with Keith stepping up. Looked like it could have been a spread eagle. Started out that way. And now like, it may be a carryover. Like the six fell into the three, which in turn knocked the two and the four down. No. No. Nine. Clip the wood in the channel. It's a nine box. And the skin goes to Paul Willits for $40. Opportunity lost there for Keith Digio. Ball on his spare, takes eight. He's now just two pins behind Chris Bovair for the overall lead. Got a real spare opportunity here in the two seven though. Two pieces of wood, one behind the two and one behind the seven. Oh, oh wow. Just didn't get enough of the two pin. Tough break for Paul. Ten. $25 skin here in the eighth. Great, smooth, fluid delivery of Chris Bovair. Leave he's just a seven for a spare. the race for first place close. Still just two pins apart, Chris and Paul, and uh, Brian and Keith trying to gain ground to maybe get a shot at second. Brian needs some marks right away. There's a big ball. Everything but the 10.
Two single pins missed here in the eighth. One by Chris Bovair and one by Brian Uphold. And Brian really needed that one. He certainly did. Some 40 pins down. 42 actually with the leader Chris and 40 behind Paul. Chance for Keith though to make up some ground here. Not that way though. Pretty good recovery. He leaves the five pin. We're going to have a carryover with 10 boxes. The ninth box will now be worth $50. be tough for Brian to rally I would think Keith would still have a shot if he were to put some big marks up Paul and Chris are looking pretty much in command right now Paul had the big 138 opening game for the spare no will take his nine and 97 after nine there have not been a lot of marks on the board in this game for Chris. A nine. One nine. ten. Chris and Paul are still just two pins apart. I dare say Brian needs a mark. A strike would be better. Right. Chance on the diamond here, though. Nope. Not Brian's day today. Had that big 151 game, second game last week to claim second place. But not able to make it happen today. Nines carry are creating a possible carryover here. Keith needing a mix. Doesn't really get one. And now the wood is going back out of the way, too. Which doesn't help. It was. There is a double piece of wood there, but see if we can snap it. Oh, yes. great shot. That's a $50 shot. Well deserved. It also keeps Keith at least alive for a chance at second place, although it's going to be tough. And the last skin of the day is now worth $50. bad box if he doesn't get a, a mark and he's not going to get that. Ten. One oh seven. Two forty five for Paul Willits. Now that last pin was important. Right. Because of Keith's mark in the ninth. That means he will need Keith now will need a double strike in order to have a shot at second place. Speaking of strikes, Chris Bovair with one, ending a five-box drought. But he is safely in to next week. Just nudging this four pin right there. In fact, Chris will be our pinfall winner today. Look 
lockout. And Chris will take a six on the strike, 126 to go with his 127 opening game, 253. And Chris will be the overall pinfall leader, provided Keith Digio does not throw a triple strike. Chris could win this final skin, too, with that strike. I was going to say there'll be a couple bowlers rooting for Keith to throw a strike to have his skin, <laughs> but I'm not so sure Paul will be rooting real loud. <laughs> Nine box for Brian Uphold. Never really got it started today. 203 for Brian. So Keith Digio, if he were to throw a triple strike right here, would be back next week. Other than other than that, it'll be. Chris and Paul. And there you go. And the last skin of the day goes to Chris. For $50. So Keith Digio's consecutive appearance streak will end at three. He finishes with 228. We'll be back to check the scores and the prize money here on Candlepin Skins after this break. First, the pinfall totals today. Up on top, Chris Boivere with the 253. Paul Willits just eight pins back. Keith Digio third, and Brian Uphold was not able to uh, make the magic happen after that 151 last week. And on the money board, Chris Boivere, the big winner there, too. $200, taking a good share of the prize money today. Everybody able to at least grab a little. Keith Digio did pretty well for himself, $135. So Chris and Paul will be coming back next week then with their second straight appearance, and they will be joined by Bill Hart and Pat Pay. That should be some fun. That should be a lot of fun. Those two, uh, four great bowlers right there, and that should be a lot. Maybe a little bit of trash talking, too. <laughs> Don't forget, tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes, Dan and I will be back, and we'll begin our search for the final qualifier for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions over on Stars and Strikes. So we hope to see you then. That's tomorrow at noon here on the Winds of New England. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Thanks for joining us.